What is going on, guys? The most beautiful thing of today was absolutely extra time. You would think if you were just turning on the TV that this was the start of the match, that this was everyone getting ready to go, but instead it's the Romanisti out, record attendance 60,000, 67,230 something because of the section that is usually closed for away fans, is reserved for them, was banned. That was not allowed. And what meant is that that could be opened for Romanisti. Oh my gosh, the vibrations, the electricity when that was being played at the start of extra time. It's like this wave comes over and it's like, you know what? Now, now you're really in it. And I can't imagine what that feels like as an opponent, let alone as the home team. If you were a Roma player, and I think we all dream about that, what that must actually feel like to get spurred on by that many people. And it's, it's such a hive mind. It's such a, a collective mentality to push them on. And it, it goes down to their core. It goes into their heart. And that's one reason why I think Roma comes away with the win today. Guys, I'm Wayne Gerard. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be taking a quick look at Roma Feyenoord. And the first thing I want to look at today, uh, yeah, we can do a little play-by-play -play quickly. So that goal by Jimenez, Jimenez is a terrific player. Is that a legit goal? It is. It hits right here. And, and you know what? It's so, it's so borderline that I think you give advantage to the striker. I'm a big fan of giving advantage to the striker in offsides positions and things like that. So I think for today, look, you got to let it go sometimes. And it does. But more importantly, what happens about 10 minutes after that is Svilard. Mila Svilard comes up with a phenomenal save to keep that match at 1-0 or 0-1 for the time being. And today is, is so much thanks to him. He's obviously my MVP. I'm going to guess he's yours. Okay, so after that, uh, about what, what is it, the 15th minute, Pellegrini hits a wonder goal. That one comes after being laid off by El Shadoui. And who is it but the captain himself in front of that record attendance who puts it away? It is an exquisite strike, like a work of art, like a Bernini masterpiece. He carves that out with his foot to strike the net and paints just a beautiful picture or sculpts the most beautiful work of art under the Curva Sud. Roma goes on into the second half, and you know what? They very well could have won it. Going into 120th minute, Lukaku gets a chance, but it's a great save by the keeper. The team was exhausted at this point. I was speaking to some of the guys on our group chat uh, when in Rome group chat. And they were just mentioning, how I, you know, I, I said probably they're fatigued because the lines became a little bit broken up between the midfield and defense, and that's natural. And I give credit to Feyenoord. They came. Slot is a good manager. He speaks a little bit too much. He's a little bit arrogant, but he gets his boys motivated. And these aren't superstars. These are up-and-comers. They're a relatively young team. And he has them playing good football. I do see Arnis Slot probably in the EPL next year. He's going to go somewhere bigger. Maybe he'll even take over from Ajax, to be honest with you. I bet you he gets a chance at that job as this season. Ajax is just stinking up the place. Okay, penalties go on. Svilar, hero, almost makes three saves. He gets onto the third. But then who is it? Somebody who really needs his confidence boosted. Somebody who, if he didn't make this, it could have been catastrophic for the rest of his season. But Zalewski buries it. Everyone goes wild. It was phenomenal to see. I just posted uh, a bunch of pictures on Twitter. I'm going to keep posting them throughout the day. I've got the gallery here, about 94 incredible photos that I'm, I'm just looking through. They're great from today. Photographers did a great job. But um, yeah, let's look now at that starting lineup. So what we see here is Spinazzola seems to be the tr trusted, tried and true, tried and trusted starter for De Rossi. If he has his pick between Angelino, Zalewski, who he sees as a forward, or Spinazzola. Spinazzola is his number one. Out on the right, goes with Carlos Diego Diagorente, center back pairing with Mancini. Uh, and obviously, Svilar has become his number one. The midfield, though, the double pivot of Cristante Paredes, which I quite like, even over Bove, who I love, but Eh, Roma had to get the job done today, and I think Derossi went with experience. Pellegrini there plays this attacking mid slash. Sometimes he slides out to the left with Paolo Dybala, of course, Ramalu Lukaku, and El Faraone out on the left wing. 
And then as we mentioned, it's Jimenez, of course, gets the goal number 21, 29. I wear that number sometimes too, oddly enough. Stang's the number 10, Pike Zhao, uh, Knife Coop. These are a bunch of players who are regular starters as well as Timber and Viefer. Uh, half of them did not start, I think, including Hanko and Bilen. Uh, Gertruida, we should remember him from last year. I think even the year before when Roma played uh, Feyenoord, Hartman and Vellenreuther in net. And uh, the look, you could look at the substitutes here. The benches get emptied out, of course, because of that added time. Uh, five players, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'm going to guess that there's some rule, right? There's got to be a rule where you can have up to six or even seven players in added time. Or, you know, when it, when it comes down to the wire there, that much time, 120 minutes. I'm going to favor that. I don't like because of how long these seasons are. I do think that the players need a, a little bit more time. So a little bit more substitutions can go a long way. But let's move on to the last segment of this show. Like I said, I'm trying to keep it brief, I'm trying to keep your day moving. Let's look at what that all she said. Uh, a couple quotes here. And one thing I really want to read is, uh, you know, he gets a congratulations and he says, we have to shake off that like fatal feeling of like this. It's always going to be death and it's my and joy, uh, never a joy in Roman. It's like, we got to shake that off and we have to be happy for today. Let's take a look at this quote. Svilar showed that he has nerves of steel. This is what the reporter says. He says, yeah, he's beyond his years. He says precocious, but I, I, I translated that as nerves of, uh, beyond his years. He says, be strong, especially with his head. He's supported by the team. We have great faith in him. And he's also supported by Rui, who is a wonderful man. Not just luck, but then there's timing, nerves, uh, and nerves on penalties. He was really good. Great praise from the manager on Svilar. The Greenies' performance he says it's right that he gets the satisfaction from tonight. It's right that his name is there on this beautiful evening that he can be referred to for the fans. That's me speaking. He says in the locker room, I said that it's too early to celebrate. It's not even the round of 16. Pellegrini has experienced moments in which he was questioned, and I'm sorry because he's an example and a great player. At times, right, we all Roma fans, due to his form, criticize Pellegrini, but it's, it's, it's beautiful. It, it really is. What other word could you use? And that sounds dramatic, but it's beautiful to see him overcome this and become a completely different player. Jeez. The embrace under the curva suit had a different feel to it. He says, I find myself having to thank them. My role requires it. He says, uh, I couldn't directly translate this. He says, it's like, mi vergogna. Like it's, it, it changed me to go under the suit as a player. It was more automatic. To me, these people need to be thanked, but I don't want to get too excited because it was only a playoff. When when I when we arrived, they pulled up the bus, pulled up to the bus. I try to be cold and moderate, but they must not think that I have changed. So deep down in him, you know that he loves it. You know he loves that feeling, and he's emotional. But he's like, I'm trying to be more mature. I'm trying to be cold. It's kind of the best word here to use. And he says that. How do you improve? This is the right response. We got to work. We got to get back out onto the pitch and get back. It's hard work, mental work. From that mental aspect, is we have to work on these concepts, which perhaps get boring, but help to bring out about a good result. Um, we can skip that about the. The penalty, but last last question here by the reporter: Why doesn't Roma last ninety minutes? He says every match is different. We don't last ninety minutes. It's not easy, and we remember there are opponents. A lot of times we forget. Yeah, Roma's playing against another team. Um, he says we faced a team that can make the Champions League, who took the ball every now and then, like they took control of the game. There can be tiredness. Obviously, we have to work and understand because we can't even working with our heads to hold the field. In the 120th minute, I saw everyone ready to sprint for Lukaku. The goalkeeper performed miracle on him, so there was plenty of fuel left in the tank. Guys, let me know what you thought of this match. If you're ecstatic, if you're happy, or if you're like, no, 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 it's just starting. And I think it's a little bit of both for me. Yes, this was just a playoff. This is the round of 32. Roma go on to the round of 16 now. However, it uh, it gives you it gives you a very good feeling, and I feel optimistic and energized after this match. Ciao.